With only 2GB of RAM and a puny 32GB of internal storage, the HP Stream 11 is not what I'd call powerful. After more than a year of being thrown into a school bag and not taken care of, how well does this cheap, academically orientated laptop handle modern tasks? Let's find out. First of all, it's going to need a good clean. With the help of some eucalyptus oil, most of the surface discoloration and marks come right off. Also, remember to put the lid back on your cleaning products so you don't spill them. I was also sure to wipe the screen gently with a damp paper towel covered in water as I do not want to use harsh cleaning chemicals on the display, as it might strip away the protective coating. After a wipe with some lens cleaner and a microfiber cloth, the display wasn't looking too bad. Overall, it's a clean machine once again. This was basically the cheapest laptop you could buy in most retail stores in Australia a few years ago. In fact, I'm pretty sure this model is still sold for the same price. For your money, I think this one was originally $239, you get a slim, durable laptop with excellent battery life, perfect for bringing to school. As far as ports go, you get a full-size HDMI, microSD, USB 2 and a high-speed USB 3 port, as well as a 3.5mm audio jack. The real question is, how does it perform? This laptop has a dual-core Intel Celeron N2840 dual-core CPU clocked at 2.12GHz. Running games off an external Samsung SSD likely help, and BeamNG Drive running at 720p lower settings was actually somewhat playable. Playing on a map with very simple scenery and geometry, I managed to get a fairly consistent frame rate around 12 to 14 frames per second. Minecraft with the Optifine mod installed and the view distance set to 8 managed to get a frame rate between 12 and 50. Not great, but still somewhat playable. Somehow PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds actually loads. Playing at lower settings at 720p gets around 2 to 3 frames per second in the main menu. Sadly, when I attempt to join a game, it just crashed after a few minutes of loading. Luckily, there is actually a way to make even a laptop as basic and underpowered as this play games really well. You may have heard of GeForce Go, which is a program that streams the game over the internet to your computer. If my internet connection wasn't complete trash, I would definitely try it. However, I can still use Steam local streaming from my far more powerful desktop computer. This actually works really, really well. I've set it to stream at the laptop's native resolution of 1366 by 768 and have set the quality of streaming to beautiful. The latency is minimal and the games look pretty good as well. Occasionally, there will be noticeable artifacts due to compression and likely my local network. Having a rock-solid 60fps playing games running on this tiny underpowered laptop is truly something to marvel at. Counter-Strike GO also streamed alright. I noticed that the input lag was more noticeable due to the precise nature of the game. Image quality was also somewhat affected by the traffic on my network. YouTube playback and web browsing was also decent. So, how good is the display? Well, it's not terrible. The resolution is perfectly fine for an 11-inch notebook. The colours and brightness are acceptable, but off-angle viewing is not good. The keyboard and trackpad are also not great. Each key press feels quite hollow. I'm simply not a fan. By all means, you could still get by using this laptop for word processing, but it would not be my first choice though. Once again, the battery life is still excellent. You could easily use this for a whole day of school or work. Even though it has flash storage, it's only the EMMC type, so read and write speeds are about 150 megabytes per second. So, as they are still basically the cheapest laptops you can buy in retail stores in Australia, would I recommend them? If you plan on using it for school, typing documents and need excellent battery life, I'd say yeah. Honestly, by now these laptops should have at least 4GB of RAM and a 64GB SSD, as you have barely any space to use. If you can find one cheap, I don't think you'll be disappointed if you keep your expectations low. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Feel free to leave a like if you've enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more videos really soon. I'll catch you in the next video.